The creative industries are worth 71 billion to the British economy, which makes it the second largest driver of the economy. Um, it, it created 144,000 positive jobs last year, so that's you know that's that's positive only that were lost. Uh, it's it was the largest growth um, in exports of, of any sector. I think it was 17 billion, something like that was was exports. Um, we're seen as the preeminent creative nation. It's it's great for our, for brand Britain. Uh, it's working. Well, we can't be complacent because the, you know when you, when you've got something that's successful, the world's a big place, and it wants you know it wants a bite of of what you're having. Um, the advantage that we've got is our ed the education, the, the creative industries education and design education in particular over here is very strong, and that'll take some catching up. So that that helps, um, and we've got that you know when you've got that. DNA and that heritage of being creative and all the, the youth culture that we've created and, and the movements that, we, that we've always done in the UK. It does give us a head start, but we, you know, we can't get complacent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at the moment about, you know, especially when you see the Chinese, how they're coming along at the moment and how, you know, when, when we had Red or Dead in the 80s and the 90s, there, you'd never, there wasn't a chance that you could have sold to any, any shop in China, never mind what any Chinese people living outside of China have ever wanted what we did but now if um, you know in terms of consumerism over there they, they're understanding creativity they're under understanding style and you see some pretty cool things coming out of China young people are always looking to be different to an extent they're always you know naturally um, when you're young, you're you're discovering yourself. You're you're wanting to stand out from the crowd. You, you're you're making decisions on the music that you like and, and and the fashion that you like, and and so it's always moving. I think the problem that we have today is that, unlike in my time, a movement could start and really develop and stay underground, and uh, and people wouldn't find out about it. And it, it would have time to gestate and and to and to really develop. But now, because of social media. You know everything is known straight away, and thing movements don't get a chance to develop. So fashion is so fast that that things, you know, the change is often too quick for its own good. Well, business lessons, lessons in thrift are, are simple. That you you know if you if if you mind the pennies, the pounds will look after themselves. And you know that's an old-fashioned saying, but it, it it's it's very relevant. We. Have always run our whole lives on thrifty principles, and it and it and it serves you well. You just have to know, you know, when you might be being too thrifty, and that can hold back some of the things that you, that you that, that might give you growth. But being careful and being thrifty and is is sensible in business. It's also it works in terms of sustainability and waste, and you know we we live by it. Well. Uh, Myself and my wife, you know, who've, who've, who've always run our businesses, we were brought up with those principles um, from the background that we came from, and we've passed those principles on to our kids. It's a lot easier if it's kind of ingrained in you from family life. Um, but you can learn things at college, and you can learn things at work, and you know, it's just, it's just sometimes it's just simple nagging. You know, in our office, if somebody leaves a light on in a in a room and there's nobody in it, we'll tell them to to turn it off. If it's just constant, and it's just it, it, when it becomes embedded in a, in, a, in an organisation, it becomes natural, and everybody goes by that, those kind of unwritten rules anyway. Well, I have to look at the key components of our success, and that, um, probably the the ultimate one that I'd look at is an ability to work hard. At it's very rare that you see that I've met anybody who's uh, capable of harder graft than myself and Geraldine and the team. You know, all know that, and and you end up with a team who also share those share those values. Um, you know, if somebody doesn't work hard at our place, they, they don't last. As sim simple as that. So that you know, you can't. You know, you, you, there's no substitute for just getting stuck in, and that's what we do. There's also, you know, one thing that we've always had is va a value system within within the businesses that we know what projects to take. And what to do with them because you know we know what what we are strong at we know what our convictions are we have a, a, a saying that design is about improving things that matter in life well 
you know, that, that means that you can think about things that matter in life and maybe it doesn't matter. If you get asked to design a, a house for a very rich person, does that matter in life? It matters to them, but not to life in general. Therefore, you turn that down. Uh, and that means that you concentrate on social housing, which has a bigger impact. And by calling ourselves social and affordable designers and by having those kind, you know, that, that gives yourself a, another thing that you know, you know what to do. So I'd say that any business should have a raison d'etre, a USP, which we definitely have. Um, and then you've got to enjoy what you do. If you enjoy what you do, your skills get better anyway. And, and you know, I haven't mentioned be good or be, be a great designer because I think we've learned to become that by having all the other, you know, having all the other, other attributes. Well, classic issues are often building a team around you to take you to the next level. And, and that's, you just have to get out and find people and talk and you have to, you have to, you know, to build this, this network. The other thing is getting your stuff made uh, at the right price and on time. And again, you need um, manufacturing partners who believe in you, who, who you look after so that they look after you. It, ultimately, you learn that you have a good business by having good relationships. It's, it's that you have a good life by having good relationships as well.